Thanks a lot for coming tonight. Um, I wanted to sort of start tonight with this slide. Now, I know a lot of you will look at this and go, what the hell is going on? There's a load of numbers here. So I put some red circles in. Um, this is a lesson I gave probably four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago. Um, and it's what's quite interesting, it's driver lesson. Um, and the person was hitting the ball on average 129 yards with their driver, okay, at averaging 114 miles an hour. That's all you need to know technically wise, 114 miles an hour hitting at 129 yards. By the end of the lesson, the average had gone down, okay, so they hadn't got any fitter, they hadn't got any stronger, they weren't swinging the club any faster, but 40 yards, 40 yards gained, okay, in the air, okay, in half an hour, okay. It doesn't always happen as easily as that for everyone, but the potential is there. Now, in order to hit the ball further, you need to swing the club faster, okay? But we've all got busy lives. We don't all go to the, have time to go to the gym and work out like Rory McIlroy has been doing and how he's gained his yards. So we're going to go through some simple ideas today on how you can get some extra speed and get some extra distance without having to join the gym or have a membership, okay? So let's get started. Right, so... First things first, this is the most important slide out of them all today, and it's often one that's most overlooked, okay? To hit the ball further, you have to hit the ball out of the middle of the club. And you'll go, yes, I mean, we know that. But how, but how do you measure it? How do you know that you hit the ball out of the middle of the club face? Now, there's a couple of nice, really simple ways that you can do it. And one of my favorite things that I use, and those guys that had lessons with me, will have probably seen, smelt, and felt this, okay? And they're all nodding their head in agreement with me. This is very, very simple, our answer to the £30,000 trackman launch monitors, etc. And it is athlete's foot powder spray. Okay? Make sure you get the powder version, don't get the gel version because that gets all messy. <laughs> powder. Literally sprays a film of powder on the face and tells us where we hit it. Okay? And you'd be amazed. And again, the guys that have been in for lessons will be amazed at what this tells us about how we hit the golf ball. Now this is this club, okay, and that's a shot that I hit to take a picture for tonight. Um, and obviously it's showing that I'm just slightly not quite in the middle, okay? But if, you, if you're consistently hitting the ball there, then you can learn about it and work <coughs> out what's gonna happen with the ball flight. If you're hitting it here sometimes and over here and then sometimes over here, it's not gonna be very consistent. And we're not all good enough players to know where we hit the ball on the club face or have access to that sort of technology all the time. But you can practice in the net, at home, at the driving range this winter, learn to hit the ball out the middle, okay? That works for driver, okay, and woods. What happens with irons, because obviously we hit the ground with irons, that's not so easy. So again, nice simple answer that you've got at home, and this will be great, because it'll get rid of probably some things that have passed their expiry date, because we're never very good at checking these things, are we, Matt? Plasters, okay? Nice and simple. Stick a plaster either side of the middle of the golf club. Okay, I'll bring it around so you can all have a look. It's, the cushiony bit is just slightly above the bottom of the club, can you see that? Okay, and just spread out nicely so you can hit the middle of the ball. If you hit shots out of the middle, you will feel it on because it's come off the cushiony part and it'll also sound different. Okay? If you're not noticing any difference, you can always put a little bit of tape underneath that just to raise it up a little bit. And again, great way to practice, not gonna cost you anything. We'll get rid of some plasters that are in your cupboard that have probably passed their expiry date. These were 2015, yeah, 2015 expiry. So a good use for two plasters that we didn't have any other use for. So here we go. Other things that you can use, blue tack, you know, the little felt tabs that you put on furniture that have got adhesive on the back of them, all great for that. Bottom line of this slide is key, feedback, okay? If, you, if you're hitting shots just practicing, and you've got no feedback on what you're doing in terms of strike, then you're not necessarily learning. If you can't hit the ball out of the middle of the club consistently, and that is a skill, then you don't know if that's the fault or if it's something in the swing that we're gonna talk about later on. So strike is so important, can't emphasize it enough two nice simple ways you can practice that. And all you need to do is stick the plaster on, on your seven iron, hit four or five shots with the seven iron, put that down, then go to the six or the eight iron, then go back to the seven iron. You don't have to keep on with that. The same with the driver, you don't have to always hit all the shots with the driver, hit a few, then have a rest, then go back to the, to the feedback. 
The spray will wear off, but for £2.50 or whatever that is a can, it will last you a long, long time. Okay, so once we've learned to hit the ball out of the middle of the club, how do we actually maximise what we've got, what we bring to the table? Obviously, everyone in here is different fitness levels, everyone's different flexibility levels. How do we know that we're getting the most out of our golf shots? So if we talk about driver to start with, driver we want to launch the ball up in the air. Okay. So to launch the ball up in the air, it is helpful and preferable to hit the ball on the way up. Okay. That's why we're allowed to use a tee peg, that's why we've moved the ball forward in our stance, so we can help hit the ball on the way up. Okay. Everyone knows that, yeah? but how do we have any feedback to that? So, nice little setup again here. Not going to cost you, might cost you a few pounds to buy a box of balls from the shop, but you've probably got some of these at home. They even come with built-in wind flaps for English weather. <laughs> So you can stick a tea peg as I've done in here through the end, just so it doesn't blow away. But if you start destroying this box within one or two shots, and again those had lessons will be, will be nodding saying, yeah, we've hit the we've hit the ball box out into the range. If you're hitting the ball on the way down and destroying box after box, you're soon gonna get the feedback and change what you're doing and help you then hit the ball on the way up. Okay? So golf ball box, can of foot spray we've sold so far for a driver. Yeah, they should have got some packs together, could have made a bit more money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't always have the ball on a tee peg, do we? A lot of the game is played on the ground. Another one of my amazing inventions that I'm going to make millions from. Garden twine, okay? You just need a simple length of garden twine. I'm going to pass this around so you can all see it. All you do, stick that there on the ground. Hopefully this stands up first time. Whew. Pressure's off on that one. And then all you do, if I'm going to imagine hitting a golf ball towards that wall, I'm not going to do, not with you, all of you lot in the room anyway. Put the golf ball just in front of that gateway there. Okay, can everybody see that stand up? You can't see it. And all we're going to do is we're going to make some swings, missing the gate and hitting the ball. Okay, if you're coming too steep down into the ball, you're going to hit this gateway. If you're leaning back and lifting up on an iron shot, you're going to hit the gateway. Okay, it's a nice, simple, simple way to make a few swings. Okay, and not hit that gate. It's literally a simple bit of twine that you get from the garden centre, make it into a little T-shape. Again, simple, simple, simple stuff. <laughs> Does all that make sense so far? Yeah. Yes, Simon, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Good, we're all going to be raiding our cabinets, all our first aid cabinets when we get home. Okay, right, let's actually talk about the golf swing now. So, this is where the volunteer in the hot seat would have come in and some of you heard as as um as we came in that there was a hot seat in here and someone was going to be in it now of all the people in the room none of you sat in the hot seat which i cannot believe <laughs> so phil graham has very kindly agreed to record this for us but i also need another volunteer so ken as you are stood here if you could just stand there for me you could be my model <laughs> phil i'm just going to give you this if you can get Ken in shot, and at the appropriate moment, say, press the red button. I want you to take that in your left hand, and I want you to throw it to be like a frisbee. Be careful, this doesn't always go straight. <laughs> Are we there, Phil? Is he in shot? Everybody? Yeah, he is He's in, in shot. shot. Yeah. Press the red button. It's going. Look, let's go. Oh, you can do better than that. <laughs> Come on, you can throw it harder than that. Come on, <laughs> give it to me. Yeah. Want to knock you over. That's all right. Good, perfect. And you can stop. Right, let's have a look at that footage. Thank you, Ken. You can sit down. I won't pick on you again. Right, let's have a look. This is the first week effort, so we'll just skip past this. We'll just need to see this. Look how the LEDs flick it. Can you see that? Look at that technique. <laughs> Athleticism personified. <laughs> right, here we go. Winding up. Yes, look at that. Action. Brilliant. Okay. Can you see in here? You'll say no, but let me just zoom in. On Ken's left hand. You're not left handed, are you? Only to right with. Only to right with. And you demonstrate that by using your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Right. So, can you see how Ken's wrist is moving in that fashion there? Yeah? If he was a bit more flexible and a bit younger, he'd probably get into this position and then throw the frisbee that way. Can you see? Yes, sir, we can all see. That's right, you don't have to talk at once, that's fine. 
Okay. Now, don't you think that's quite an efficient way of moving something in that direction? Yeah. It wouldn't make any sense, really, would it, to move the wrist that way and then try and move the wrist that way because that would move the hand backwards. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So how does that? Of <laughs> course, cool, a tough crowd, isn't it? Right. Right. Let's just get this back up. Right. So. Think frisbee. When you're hitting the golf ball, think frisbee. This is left hand we're talking about, right hand for some. Pointing at anybody. Okay. If we can feel like the wrist goes here and then that way, that's got to be a more efficient way, or very efficient way, of moving the club in that direction. Okay. It doesn't work for all people. There are plenty of athletes out there that go the other way with their wrist, but for general public, everybody, it's going to be more efficient to move it that way, okay? So grab a frisbee at home, left-handed, remember, chuck it around, practice that motion. Now, I didn't give you any coaching on that frisbee, did I? No. You knew, you, in, you probably, how many times do you throw a frisbee with your left hand? Mm, not very often. Not very days. often these no. days, good. But he knew the skill, didn't he? He knew what he was, he knew the objective, move the frisbee from here to there, and that was do that. So how do we then have this feedback at home? I brought a little club so I don't whack the ceiling. So I can be a bit flaky, I know that. So if you stand at home, I'm sure most of you, you've all got lovely houses, I know, have got French windows, patio doors, something nice and large. You've probably got rooms big enough to swing a club in with a huge full length mirror. If you get, <laughs> try and get, make some back swings and try and get the feeling that that wrist is working this way, okay? I could talk about flexion, extension, ulnar deviation, all this sports science rubbish. But to be honest, if you can feel like you're gonna get the wrist working here, <laughs> and then throw it, just like this person is demonstrating left hand perfectly for us in the frisbee motion, you can get the club travelling at more speed here, when it matters. Yeah, makes sense? Okay, and a good way to look at that in the mirror is a lovely bit of hitting surface here. We all know, what, hopefully all know what the hitting surface of the golf club is. If you make a back swing, stop, have a look in the mirror. If you can see some of that hitting surface, it's good. If you're starting to hide that hitting surface away, then somewhere along the line you've put a twist in the swing. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. If you put a twist in at some point, you're going to have to try later on to take it where? Out. Mm -hmm. okay? And that just makes the game harder. It's already hard enough. All make sense? Yes? Yeah. Questions? No? Yeah. Cool. Bright. This is a lovely image. I love this one. Yeah. Can you see too much hitting surface? Potentially. Potentially, but yeah, when we stand on the practice ground, if you're hitting it on the nine hole course from the practice ground, then you're seeing too much surface, probably. <laughs> but yeah, for most people, they're not going to hit it that far left because the skill will sort them out. Okay, when most who, who here has trouble hitting the ball too far left <laughs> consistently, too much hook just hooks off. Yeah, you've probably got too much of that, not for sure, but maybe. So, be interesting to see on camera. But yeah, mm. most, most people in the room are faders, slicers, especially with driver. Okay? Get the wrist in that position, it's going to make it easier. Especially if you also do this. So Phil, we're going to need you again. Just lean across the line, right? Yeah, I'm just... I don't know what's going on on my Facebook for some reason, it's going crazy. <laughs> Which is never a good thing, is it? Right, there we go. So who's quite an athletic? quite near the front. David. Thank you so much. Sorry. If you're the only one taking notes, I'll give you a break from that. Because no, no doubt, as with all things at school, they'll be wanting to copy your notes later. Yeah, David, they won't be able to read it. <laughs> right. You're right-handed? Yeah. Good. Phew. Good start. Right, you're going to throw... You got him in shot? Yep. You're going to throw that ball as hard as you can to me, please. Right-handed, go. Oh, that, would have, that would have been a good catch for me. <laughs> that, that'll do, that'll do. That was pretty hard. That's why we use a sponge ball. Look how you enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> a bit higher. Okay, so obviously David is once again not a world class athlete, but even he knows <laughs> even he knows how to throw a ball over our right hand. Okay. And again, no there's no no training in this, there's no skill that I've taught him. Should have picked someone that wasn't wearing. <laughs> Would have been a good catch, wouldn't it? Would have been a good catch. Okay, right. Important stuff now. Okay. 
Forget the throw for a second. That is not <coughs> a million miles away from a golf swing follow through, is it? Okay. Yeah. Take away the fact that he's just launched something at me. The lower body is not far away from a. <coughs> so, in terms of athletic motion, they're not a million miles away. Let's have a look at this trail arm, okay? This arm here. Now, can you see as he starts his forward motion towards me? I'm just going to move across a little bit so you can see. Can you see how his elbow is leading the motion, yeah? Here. And then at the last minute, just as he's thinking, right, I've got him here, he's let the hand comes past. And then he's through. Yeah? Can you see that? Sorry. Let's <laughs> <Right, right, right. laughs> need to employ another cameraman, but that was true. nobody expected that. I don't think anybody I saw that. I wasn't expecting him to take a you full stride. No. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm honest, I'd have been down on the haunches. If I was. But, but great example, okay, of rotating that trail shoulder here, okay, getting it in here and then throwing, okay. If you were a world-class athlete like Tom Brady over here. You could, oops, this is. One day you'll be able to do this without having to keep skipping between devices. You can get into quite possibly the most amazing trail shoulder I have ever seen. Now, for me to get in that position there, I'd have to be sort of here, okay? But that's what they do. That's why they do so much stretching and flexibility work because they know that that is so important. And again, it's important in our golf swing. So. Who, who here takes big divots often with their, with their irons or catch the ball heavy or top the ball? Probably because the club comes from too high, too late in the golf swing. If we can get that trail shoulder rotating with our lovely left wrist that we've already created, that gets the club lower to the ground, inside more, and then all we need to do is turn our body. We've got that lovely in-to-out swing path that we've all heard about. We've already created our lovely sentence strike because we've practiced that. And we're three quarters of the way to hitting the ball further. All make sense so far? Yeah? Yeah, go. My understanding when I'm trying to hit the golf ball is yeah. that it all starts with the hips. Did I do that when I threw that ball at you? Or is Great it just question. A Good question. I would well, say yes. My understanding's yes. correct. You started with the hips, definitely. I would, say you, I would say you certainly started with your lower body. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, proper motivation, right. So, certainly a move, a forward, movement. A forward movement, which is yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, not a million miles away. Okay. Forward movement and then a rotation. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say your hips and arm are moving fairly in sync there. We just need a bit of backing music and we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't want you playing that again, sorry. But that's <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> But yeah, you, do, you can start with the lower body, and that's, we're going to move on to the body now. There's no point using the body unless you're getting your hands and arms in good positions, because you can, you can swing as hard as you like. If your face angles are all wrong, you're going to hit the ball all over the place. And if you don't hit the ball at the middle of the club, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Okay, this is the last funny story of the day. I promise, unless there's any good questions. So, body rotation, okay? Again, this is, what, this is one of my big ones when I'm teaching. I want everybody to finish body turn to the target, just like David demonstrated. He was here, wasn't he? He wasn't throwing that ball like this with his head down, okay? If you learn one thing from today, don't, please don't keep your head down. Allow your head to turn and finish with the swing. Rory McIlroy is a pretty good example of someone who's still young and flexible that can get to about here with his head down. Most of us can't do that. We haven't got time to all the money to spend on physio if we try and do that. <laughs> okay, so hands up in the room if you've done any water skiing. Good, one, two, three, four, excellent. Okay, so we're going to imagine that our golf club is our water ski setup, okay? And those people that have just put their hands up have now got to shout out the answers. So, speedboat, tow line, water skier. Already ready in case you get some injuries. So, if the speedboat travels in a nice straight line, what happens to the water skier? Don't all have to shout it out once. Just go straight, straight, straight behind, don't they? Yeah. And if we're going this way, that would be there. Yeah. If the speedboat turns left, clues in the picture on the screen, guys. Which way is the speed? Which way is the water skier going to go? Right. To the right. Cool. So, 
we can see that in this water ski setup or golf club, you can have one thing happening at this end and something different happening at this end. Agreed? Yeah. Does, they don't, it's not the whole same thing. And I think, again, this is where maybe there's some confusion out there um, in golf instruction and in people's understanding. People think they have to hit the ball into out, yeah? Into out swing path to get that nice draw, all of that stuff. You stood this side, we want that into out swing path. So they try and swing into out with their hands. Okay, and if we're using our water ski setup, which we know is already true, if we go this way, in to out with our hands, this poor old chap just gets stuck behind, not having much fun, and certainly not going out to where the golf ball is. So what I'm saying is, if we can feel that we're going to turn left through the golf shot, right, if you're left handed, <laughs> then the club itself is going to kick out to the right. Is that too much for anybody in here? And be honest if it is. No? It will make sense. Yeah. If we turn our body and hands left, the club gets kicked out to the right. Yeah. yeah? And that's going to help get that nice into out swing path. It's going to add a little bit of speed at the bottom of our swing when we generally need it. Going to hit the ball further. We're going to have more smiles on our faces because we're going to make more pars and birdies. Cool. Okay. This is your image to take away. Okay. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? He's, perfect. But look how balanced and car you know, he could stand mm. there all day and do that, and he's just mm. swung that golf club probably 120 miles an hour. Okay? He's ripped his body through all sorts of crazy angles, but that looks balanced, okay? We can all get into a finished position from here down that looks exactly the same as that. There is nobody in this room that can't go like that with their body. But you've got to allow things like bottom foot come off the ground, okay? This isn't a pose position. He doesn't get paid by night to show people how clean his spikes are. Okay, he is doing that to help this hip get through, which helps the shoulders get through. As David demonstrated in his lovely throw into my shin. <laughs> you can turn through the ball, you know, you can get that athletic motion, okay? And if, I want, if you take one thing away from today, I want you to all think of that follow through, okay? And I want you to try and feel that like every swing that you do has a finish, okay? And that, that finish is eyes looking where you want to go, shoulders and chest looking where you want to go, hips looking where you want to go, knees looking where you want to go, back heel off the ground, turn through into that finish. Simon, I have a question. Please do, go. These actually turn so around. Well spotted. Don't Yeah, his right shoulders, right shoulders gone through, isn't it? I hope the ball's going that way. These people think the ball's going that way. <laughs> They're not learning anything from his golf swing at all right at this moment. They're just thinking, four letter word probably. <laughs> if he started there and he swung all the way around there, his body's going to be facing that way. Keep going, isn't it? It's that rotation, isn't it? So if, if we're trying to get you to go here, yeah. all he's done is go yeah. there, isn't he? Just kept turning. And he's flexible enough to do that without falling over. So his left foot is still where it started. Pretty much, in, would never be pretty much interestingly on his left line. foot, you know, I'm a bit of a geek on this stuff, I love all this stuff, you can see a bit of shadow yeah. underneath his left foot, his left foot has gone there. You see a lot of good players with their toes in the air, right into their left heel, because again they've just turned so far they've just kept going. And you again, if you kept trying to keep your foot planted on the floor, can't get that turn, so it's allowing that turn. You see some good players, there's one good player that I'm not going to mention in here, very good player, currently owns the President's putter. <laughs> Does that, yeah. drags his back foot on the floor and keeps on going. He's not as flexible as he used to be, but he knows he needs to keep turning. And he drags his foot on the floor. Doesn't matter, whatever the job is to get it done. Did he? <laughs> don't remember much of Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Great man, though. Great man. Pretty <laughs> youngsters. <laughs> cool. Any questions at all? Anybody got any thoughts? Anything that was too much for them? <coughs> yeah, of course you can, too. The very, very first one you had. Yep. You had the box and ball. Yep. How far? Yeah, 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 I didn't. Yeah, well, well spotted, because I didn't say that. The grip's length. Again, nice and easy. You can have, get it, get it at home. Great question, Jill. Thank you for that. Chuck it on the floor. One grip's length. Tee the ball up there. That's good. Okay, that's far enough. 
gives you a chance to hit the ball and miss it. If you're missing it loads and loads, just edge it back a bit. It's just going to help. As long as you've got your face spray on to make sure you're hitting out of the middle of the club and you're not suddenly hitting everything right down here because you're so leaning upwards. Good question, Joe. Thank you. Anyone else? No? No. I can't see what you were doing with the twine. With the twine? Yeah, sorry, I was going to pass it around, wasn't it? <coughs> Comes down to the back of the room, and you can see. The nice, simple bit. Twine. It's rubber, so it's not a scratch. Golf ball, go here. Golf ball, go here. Set up, so you just swing underneath it. Hope you miss it on the way down. Yeah, you miss it you know you're coming in nice and down. You're the top. you all, all of this is skill, okay? All of this is, is skill. It's not something that is going to happen overnight. So, you can have the, all the knowledge in the world, but unless you practice it and have the skill, you don't necessarily get the understanding. Norman, you can be my demonstrator on this one. How's your juggling? Rubbish. It doesn't happen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to teach you how to juggle three balls. Oh, stand really? out of the line. Okay, so one ball first of all, put the other two down. Okay. And this is an example of knowledge versus skill, okay? Just want you to toss the ball about head height into, into each hand, yeah? Got that? Can you manage that? Pretty good, yeah? Yeah, pretty good. Okay, grab one more ball. Okay, this time you're going to throw one up in the air. Throw the other one underneath and then catch both. When the first ball gets to here, you're going to throw it nice and slowly. One, two, throw, throw, catch, catch. <laughs> throw, throw, catch, catch. Yeah. Got the throw, that's it. So improvement. We've already seen some improvement. The second throw was better. It wasn't quite so much mild panic. <laughs> right, we need just to wait before you throw the second ball, just a little bit longer. Give yourself a bit more time. Oh. <laughs> Thought you were a cricketer. Mm. He's catching the yellow ball, no, not catching. Yeah, I've got yellow and green. I've asked ten other people to do that. I can't juggle with yellow and green balls. So. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so when, so then the next stage on from that is you can do that. Then the next stage is when that ball's in the air, you throw the other one. When that's in the air, you throw the other one. Okay. And you can, <laughs> you can juggle. Okay. Now, there's two people in this room that will testify. I learned to juggle in a week. On holiday, when I was 11 years old. Okay, I wanted to do it. Okay, we went away on holiday. We found a place that was doing like a circusy type thing for kids. We went on the Monday and got taught literally just that, okay? And that was the knowledge and that was the understanding, okay? Learn juggling is not difficult. It's throw a ball. When the first ball's here, throw the next one. When that's there, throw the next one there. And just keep catching, okay? But the skill is being able to do it, stood in front of all you lot, <laughs> and the lights are low, and I can't really see the balls very well. Good, thank you very much. <laughs> cool, if anyone's got any questions, just come and ask. If anyone wants to know where to buy this from, Sainsbury's, they haven't got it on offer on the moment, otherwise I was going to get a whole load and then fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, Greg. What do you need to juggle on the course? <laughs> when you're waiting on the tee box and Captain's driving, because there's 32 teams out there. Good. Thank you. Can you tell me what you can, You're done. We're done. Yeah. So if there's no more questions, we're done. I said it was an hour. I'm not one of It's skill, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. having the knowledge and understanding of what you're trying to do, and then having some, some sort of ref some silly reference points. The water skin, the frisbee. The throwing the ball at my shin, you know, stuff like that. It's silly stuff that you'll remember, and that's what sticks in the brain. And it is, it, it, it's the silly things that we remember in life, isn't it? You know, it's not, the, it's not that first screen of, of all that lovely data, which, I, which there are people in the room that love all this stuff, and we all do, 
I suppose, because we can get really nerdy and say we've launched the 16 degrees rather than 4 degrees and that's why it's gone up in the air and it's spun nearly 1500, 1500 <laughs> revolutions per minute less and that's why it's, you don't need to know any of that stuff. That's, mm -hmm. that's for us to understand and digest. You just need to think, frisbees, throwing the ball at my shin, turning through the shot and not face spray, make sure you hit out of the middle of the club face. Get a ball box on the floor. It's practice, it's stuff that you can do. There's nobody in here that can't get an empty golf ball box and spend 15 minutes at home, without, even without a ball, just put a tee peg in the ground and just practice swinging, hitting the tee peg and not hitting the ball box. Yeah. So the, the hit, uh, the speed of your hit controlling the club head speed? Is that to a certain saying? degree, yeah. To a certain degree. Oh, it's to a certain degree. <laughs> the, whole, the whole body's in motion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't get too hung up on any theme, particular part, really. Not in this general setting. There is, there's a sequence to it, definitely. But the sequence is quite natural, isn't it? You, you naturally threw that ball very hard. And can you just explain lag? It's a term I hear quite often. I don't really understand it. Lag. lag. Okay. Lag. Is it the amount that the head is back from your hands at impact, so that on your left? Lag. Lag. Essentially, lag is. Uh, back me up, you two at the back. If I say anything out of place here. Lag is essentially stored up energy angle, yeah. which is then released at some point. Okay, lag is quite an exciting term if you're using video yeah. because you can see it on a 2D screen. So your body but it gets it first, and the lag is the club head coming in after your body. Don't gets. get too excited about lag. <laughs> 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 Where's that ball? You have to, you, if you if you lag, you have to get rid of it have to get rid of that. No point having loads of energy here, because your hands are here and the club's way back up there. That's the, that's the speedboat, that's the getting rid of getting rid of the lay. You see these long drive guys and they're, I'm not going to do it with the club in here, but they're right around here aren't they? And yeah. then they're pulling the club down and the club head's back over here. Yeah. But at some point, that club head will get ahead of their hands. That release will happen. Happy? Agreed. Yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone else got a really difficult question? <laughs> no, like, lag is lag is a great lag is a great term that's very easy to see on two D cam two D cameras. But that if we look, if you just think of that angle, right? That's ninety degrees. Okay, everyone, yeah, happy? Ninety degrees. Okay. Now tell me, oops, is that more or less than ninety degrees? Nine. <laughs> It's the same, but does it not look a bit more because mm. I've twisted my hand back this way? Yeah. Yeah. So mm. don't get too hung up on it because the club is hopefully never vertical because mm. you're stood to the side of the ball, not on top of it. Hopefully, unless you're next to a tree. Or something. That's one I promise. Yeah. Go for, no, no. Because no. people talk about early wrist set. Yeah. So would you sign up to the philosophy and on the way back it's like an L to L thing? So when you're parallel to the ground with your arms, that you've caught to that 90 degrees that you. Just demonstrate. Yes. Yeah, so, right? right okay. Thought? So, okay. Let's let, break that down. Cock wrists, ninety degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So, ninety degrees to what? The two D camera well, that you're looking at. Yeah. yeah. So you could have From you could have ninety degrees. Parallel to the ground. Yeah. That could be eighty, eight, yeah, seventy five well, degrees. But again, your, here when it your looks more. Arm is parallel to the ground. Yeah. Just remember that the hands move in all sorts of different directions. Okay. So don't again, don't get too hung up on. Because you could you could cock what you call cock the wrist, yeah. which I would assume you mean I up do. and down. Yeah, yeah? I do. yeah. But if you up and down and add a bit of twist in, mm. difficult to see that, isn't it, at this yeah. position? Much easier to see it up here. Okay. Make sense? Understood. It's just when you set it. I mean, everyone's hmm. different. So that's not Everybody's key different. when we're talking about. No, I don't think so. I think. Again, back me up if I say anything out of place. If you, as long as as long as these numbers, and we all teach with launch monitors nowadays, sure. are pretty happy with the delivery of the club. Yeah. You can set the club here, like Adam, <laughs> <laughs> or um, who am I trying to think of? Ryan Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can <laughs> Ricky Fowler it. Okay, he's pretty good. He's won quite a lot on. Yeah, he'd be one of the favourites for World Cup this week. He doesn't have any, he's really late before he sets his wrists. There is no, there's no magic formula for when things have to happen. It's just, as long as your motion's efficient. I wouldn't get too excited about 
because ev ev every degree of change you make on the backswing, you have to get rid of all of that on the downswing to hit the ball straight and a bit more, hopefully. Anything else? Anybody? Good. Right. Who's going to buy me a drink? <laughs> Norman, I want juggling within a week, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Next year is five balls. That's what I want to learn. <laughs> and throw an American football like Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, on next week. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one last thing then. <laughs> so, no, no, just no, no, fine. You fixed it. You fixed it. You saw it. Um, Mr. Chapman's asked a good question. Um, my offer that I'm doing winter coaching um, is £100 or 95 for those guys that have come along today. Um, it's essentially broken down into four sections. We do an hour or so on the golf course. I thought it was here today, is he? No, he did, went through it this morning. We do an hour or so on the golf course, play a few holes, look at strengths and weaknesses, look at swings actually on the golf course. Because often our swing on the golf course is completely different to what we see on the range because we're nice and relaxed on the range. Nice big wide fairway to aim at. Then that leads into a three lesson action plan that we put together. So working on whichever areas of the game we think have come up on those from your feedback when you turn up and what we see on the golf course. Then that leads, hopefully that's kind of through the winter to sort of January, February time. In February time we then do what we call a gap test. And again, those that have done the short game series that I did have been done a similar sort of thing. Where we go on the launch monitor and we do, you do all the clubs in your bag. We give you carry distance, total distance. And so you can then, when you get out on the course, you've got an idea of how far your clubs go. And that's just £95. What a bargain. <laughs> You'll win that back off your mates within two months, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Any turn on? Guaranteed.